It's time for Community Matters. I'm Jay Fidel, and we have a really special show uh, at, at this block, the 3 o'clock block this afternoon on a given Monday, uh, with Kailani Kaiho, uh, who joins us from BMIX um, call in Waianae today. Hi, Kailani. Are you there? Yes, I am. Aloha, Jay. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's great. So we, we became aware of you through uh, Cheryl Lynch, who runs the Waianae Library, and uh, she was putting out a newsletter uh, for the, the event, I guess, that has to do with your big project. And your big project is all about uh, Hawaiian legend books, eight of them. And so I want to talk about that with you today. Uh, it's really special to have somebody publishing these books, not only in English, but also in Hawaiian. So how did you get started in all that, Kailani? I actually started as a, a student teacher in a Hawaiian language immersion school in Kaneohe, Pu'ohala. And at the time, back then, there weren't any books being published in Hawaiian. Um, it was at a time when we had English books and we typed the Hawaiian translations and we cut and paste those Hawaiian translations <laughs> over the English words and that's what we would use and that's how we would build our Hawaiian language library and and it was fine but there was one time where I read this book you might have heard it called The Giving Tree. Uh -huh. I really I really loved that book growing up and I thought it was wonderful and, and I started to read it and it really had a different impact on me when I read it in Hawaiian and I don't know if it's because when you speak Hawaiian, you, you kind of look at things through a Hawaiian perspective. But I felt like, how could this boy just take and take and take and take from the tree? And at the very end, there's only a stump and he just sat on it. And, and that was the end. You know, from a Hawaiian perspective, you would pray first. You would ask. You would, you would think about ways that... Um, it could be sustainable. We're, we're on an island with limited resources, so every natural resource was managed uh, to the T. So you think of, you know, harvesting seeds or, or planting cuttings in a way that would ensure that this tree would, would continue on, it would grow, you know, you'd plant baby, baby versions of the tree, and, and you'd always be very respectful um, of the tree. And so after that experience, I began thinking, you know, why are we kind of putting our language onto these English books when we have tons of our own Hawaiian stories that are in the Hawaiian language newspapers or passed down orally from our grandparents. And so in 2011, I launched uh, Hiohia, our nonprofit organization, to publish Hawaiian books that, that come from a Hawaiian source, basically. Oh, that's a beautiful picture. I'm getting the feeling that somebody helps you with these beautiful pictures. Are you the photographer, Kailani? I'm not the photographer. I am kind of just the director, the, the puppet master of everything that's happening. So we did our first project with the Legends of White and I, and that series came out in 2011. And then our more recent project, the Legends of Ko'olau Loa, which is just coming out this year in a couple months, um, and what we do is we actually wait for an invitation from a, a certain district in the, in the state of Hawaii. It could be any district. Um, so for this project, we were invited by people from the Ko'olau Loa district to come in, help research and find the stories of their district and help them to share those stories with the world. So of course, it was a lot of work. I didn't do it all by myself. We go into the community and we find over a hundred Hawaiian models who live or are from that district to reenact all the legends. We get a lot of hula halals and canoe clubs to help us with costumes. Oh, it's more than a book then. It's, you actually it's have an event book. going on with, uh, with a halal <laughs> and, some, and some, uh, some hula. Yes, we so and and so we we usually do eight legends at a time. So we look for in that community eight Hawaiian photographers who can capture the reenactments of these legends, and we try to also do them on location of where they happen traditionally. And so you know we reenact them. We have 
Hawaiian makeup artists from the district, Hawaiian seamstresses from the district, Hawaiian graphic designers, editors, language translators. <laughs> Multimedia. <everything from> <laughs> yes. To, to really get the people from that area to share their stories with the world. They're not my stories at all in, in any form. And so, and so that's basically the type of protocol that we follow to ensure that things are done correctly here. So, so you, you don't actually go out and forage for the stories. You get the community to find the stories for you. That's a lovely mm -hmm. idea, really. Yes, we do. So we have a kupuna council or a council of elders, Hawaiian elders from that district who help us to determine what stories we need to research more or which ones we might be missing. And ultimately, they help to choose the eight legends that we will be publishing in the end. So uh, the one, uh, uh, the one that you showed the graphic a minute ago, that's, a, that's your current project. That's the eight eight books, eight stories, eight legends. Can you can you yes. pick one and tell me what it's like? Pick one of those eight. Sure. Um, let's see. We have uh, a legend about Hi'iaka, which uh, she was a Hawaiian goddess, the younger sister of Pele. And I can go ahead and read a little excerpt from, from that book, no, if it's would okay you? with you. That'd be great. Sure. Um, so... If you have that image of the yeah, okay, all right, there it so is. So some of you might be familiar with Crouching Lion on Oahu. It's oh, a sure. big rock yeah. up on the top of the mountain. So this story talks about um, about that crouching lion. It, it wasn't actually a lion; it was a dog from Tahiti. And this here in this image is Hiiaka, and she's she's talking to him. So the excerpt reads. The Iaka's chant awakens the Ilio, and he responds, If that is you, O forest-eating woman of Puna, woman from the sunrise, I have grown weary of this long rest, and if you go, so too shall I, for I have had my fill of sleep. The stone shifted as if to rise from his slumber to meet his visitor. So Hiyaka, as she's traveling to Kauai to go and get her, her older sister's lover, Lohiao, she meets up with one of her family members, which is this, uh, this dog from Tahiti. And when she greets him, he's like, you're here. Can I please come with you? And, you know, ultimately he says, I'm sorry, you can't. You have to stay here and watch over everything. And he's not really happy about that. Um, but it just tells of, of all the things she does and the people she encounters as she's traveling through the Ko'olaoloa district. And what and when is it set? Is it set at a time? So maybe it's a mythological, a legend time, or is it set now or then, nineteenth century? Not or when? set now. No, it's. I don't know exactly when in time. I know it's hundreds of years ago, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure when exactly she actually came through Ko'olaoloa. But it is considered an ancient legend. So you have uh, translations into the native Hawaiian language for each of these books, then. So a lot of these legends were recorded in the Hawaiian language newspapers of the late 1800s, early oh. 1900s. So the research that uh, that we do includes going into these old um, archived newspaper documents, finding the stories. And then what one of the issues were was that the legends are very, um, a lot of the legends are being lost because unless you have access, which now we do through urukao.org, they've digitized hundreds of pages of the Hawaiian language newspapers. But unless you can read at, at a, a pretty high level of Hawaiian language, you can't, you can't access the legends. And so a lot of people didn't know, they don't know the stories because they don't read Hawaiian. And unfortunately, because of our history, a lot of Hawaiians are growing up not knowing how to speak the language. Yeah. And so one thing we did was to translate it into Hawaiian, I mean, into English, so that all Hawaiians and everyone who loves Hawaii or is interested in Hawaiian history would be able to read the legends that we are hoping to preserve and perpetuate them in that way. Yeah, oh, I, I love the idea. So the, the original story comes from one of the Native Hawaiian uh, language newspapers in the 19th century is that it and you you take that yes. out of the newspaper and you put you make a book out of it and, and what's yes. interesting uh, did you ever go to the mission house uh, museum program called uh, poo poo i think it's called poo poo dinner 
at the Oahu Cemetery, and they have they have uh, they examine the cemetery. <clears throat> they examine all the people who are buried in the cemetery, and they give you a history lesson uh, of, of the 19th century. And one of the one of the interesting threads that run through this whole program um, is is the Native Hawaiian newspapers. There were some very pe literate people in Native Hawaiian in the 19th century, throughout uh, well the latter part of the century anyway, who who were um, people of letters, uh, who who could uh, write the language and publish the language and and do newspapers. So you find a, a treasure trove of this kind of material in those uh, in those newspapers. Uh, too bad we don't have that now, but maybe we'll have it in the future, I suppose. Um, it really is a treasure trove. It there is so much information there, and and you're right. I'm a descendant of one of the missionaries, Edward Bailey from Massachusetts. And just uh, earlier this week, I was looking up stories about farming for, for a book that I'm putting together on farming. And he had written a whole series of um, pieces on farming and he published them in the Kauai Hawaii newspaper. And it was just amazing to me because he came from Massachusetts, came here to Hawaii. He really learned the language. He learned it very well. And he opened a school for girls to to educate them, and and he was nearly excommunicated from <laughs> from the mission because he was teaching women how to read and write. And so that's part of my family. <laughs> so what about the translation? I get that you did the translation for these. But you start out with the Native Hawaiian legend story, um, and then you write it up into English. And what you were reading before really struck me as very well written. So. You must have a experience in in reading native hawaiian i want to know how you got that and b um you must have some experience in writing english too uh so what, <laughs> what what's what's the story kailani <laughs> well i i'm from a family of educators i always knew i would be a teacher so all throughout high school at the kamehameha schools i did take hawaiian language and then i went on to do uh, a bachelor's degree in hawaiian language and following that, I did a master's degree degree in education. And so for, for quite a, a long while, I was a teacher in the Hawaiian language immersion schools. And so, you know, because of those two degrees and my background, uh, I really am able to, to read the Hawaiian language and, and translate it. But I'm not the only translator. Uh, I do work with a number of other Hawaiian language teachers who help with translations and a number of uh, English, um, I guess, professors and majors and different writers who do help with the English translations and editing. Yeah, so uh, I just, you know, I wonder this, you know, to, to me it presents a problem if I'm, if I'm me, just take me, nice holly guy, right? <laughs> with, a, with a great sense of appreciation and all. Um, mm -hmm. I have to go buy two books. I have to buy the book in Native Hawaiian and I have to buy the book in English and have to lay them down side by side so I can make the comparison and try to figure out what means what. Um, maybe you're thinking of this for the future, but why not make one book where the pages, the opposite pages will show the opposite languages? What do you think? I, I get that question a lot more than you probably realize. <laughs> um, and we have considered it, but being a teacher in the Hawaiian Language Immersion School, the kids are not just Hawaiian language readers, speakers at home, they, they learn English usually as their first language. Um, we're starting to get into a generation where the parents are now able to speak Hawaiian at home. So there are kids who can read Hawaiian and who, who speak Hawaiian in the home, but most of them come into the immersion schools already being able to read and, and write and speak in English. Now, because of that, that makes Hawaiian language their second language and because of that, whenever there's a bilingual book, they will read the English instead mm. of reading the Hawaiian. Oh, the so school. you want to make sure they have the Hawaiian, so <laughs> make them go out and get it. You know, <laughs> it, it reminds me of, uh, of a high school I, I'm familiar with on the Big Island, where they have a lot mm -hmm. of uh, Pacific Islanders there. And uh, the, the principal of the high school decided that, you know, it's important that the kids get an education, but he thought the parents needed one too. So he started organizing classes. Uh, I don't know if TOE knew about this. He started organizing classes for the parents too. 
Um, so it strikes me that uh, you not only want the kids to learn Native Hawaiian, uh, you want the parents to learn it too because they missed it in their education. Um, how do we do that? How do we get the parents involved? Well, I know for a lot of the Hawaiian language schools, they do offer parent classes for their students. I heard recently the University of Hawaii has opened up free Hawaiian language courses uh, on campus. So if anyone is interested, they should go. And there's also uh, a number of different programs that offer free Hawaiian language courses online. So the resources are really growing for people who are interested in learning the language. So do you ever get stories from outside the newspaper? I mean, just talk story stories stories that are passed down through the generations that are that are just that are pure legend never having been reduced to any language before or is it too late for that no we do we do get stories that are passed down from families um so the three main ways that we get legends are either recorded in the hawaiian language newspapers either from a hawaiian or non-hawaiian um author and we also get um you know there were there were non-hawaiians during that time also who are recording um all of our legends um and we so we get legends that their only source that we can find is an english source um from you know from someone who is just recording and then our third source is from families who have kept these legends and have been passing them down orally in their family, usually because one of the characters in the legend is is one of their ancestors, and so um, and so those oh, that's are really personal. yeah, that's personal. Yes, yes, it is. So it strikes me also that um, all the stories have a takeaway. They have a moral point to make, a lesson mm -hmm. to give. You spoke of some of that, but I wonder if you can give me um, sort of an array of the kinds of lessons that I would take away from these stories in the eight books. Okay. So the, the Hiiaka story, the one that we read, it is such a small snippet of the entire Hiiaka Pele saga. It is a really long book. Huakea Novomeyer actually compiled um, every newspaper entry that, that one of the writers did over, I think it was a span of two years, every newspaper entry, he, he added a little bit more of the legend, a little bit more. And what we took out of, for this book is really just maybe two weeks of entries. <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and the title that we have is Respecting Hiiaka because she was a goddess and and the people who, who were respectful to her, who welcomed her and, you know, followed proper protocols for meeting, some, for meeting a deity, um, they were rewarded, they were blessed. And then there were people who were very disrespectful to her. They ended up, you know, losing their lives or, or losing their lands or losing, uh, losing something. And so just talking about, you know, how, how we respect one another, how we treat people. And that's just one of the books. I mean... Yeah, so that'd be, that'd be a big part of the, the lesson that you provide. Also, it, it strikes me that, you know, you have, a, you have a, a, a limited, a defined body of knowledge here. It's those newspapers mm -hmm. and it's what's handed down by people who are still alive, yeah? Um, but Correct. the question I ask, you know, is, is there going to come a time, Kaiolani, when, when you actually run out of stories? Or are there enough stories to keep you busy forever and ever? You know, there are millions of pages that were that were digitized from the newspaper, and there are so many more that were not. Like we can't even begin to touch the tip of the iceberg. Really, I wish I had a long enough life. <laughs> I'm trying to steal my company so other districts can just go and do it for themselves. <laughs> Stay <But> healthy. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we will be running out anytime soon. I mean, even for, you know, that Hiyaka example, I could probably create a hundred books just out of that oh, one person. Well, let's, let's look at uh, some of the, uh, some of the graphics that you, that you showed us. So we can, uh, you know, make make sure to include everything that that you wanted to talk about. So let's let's take a look. Okay, the Hiaka you mentioned. So this is beautiful. 
You have an artist in the company that makes these beautiful graphics? Yeah, so we, we have uh, our two models here, Kelsey Mawai and uh, Tereti Grace, and our photographer, Pu'ule Akina. They're all from Po'olaloa. And then we do have a Hawaiian graphic artist, Matthew Kalbaum, who did a lot of our graphic work. And I can, I can look for these, uh, these books and, and graphics, for that matter, on your website. Uh, on my website, what's, yep, what's, what's the name of the website, Hoihia? Iohia, H-I-O-H-I-A, oh. H -I -O -H -I -A, dot okay. org. Okay, and uh, and dot, dot O-R-G. Dot O-R-G. Okay, all right. Let's see some more graphics. Okay, So What's this, this is another story about the two Hilu fish and, and how they traveled around to the Po'olaoloa district. Um, I don't even want to talk about this story. I might spoil it, but it's about two brothers. And, and one brother kind of gets lost and, and the other brother comes searching for him. They're not just fish, are they? They're much more than fish. Okay, yeah. what's the next one? <laughs> Kahitulani. Ooh, Kahitulani is a is a fun surfing legend about, about the North Shore and how he fell in love with this woman and um, and you know he he vowed that he would be, you know, he would just he would be hers, basically. But one day he went surfing and when he landed on the beach this another girl came and gave him some ili malays and and his his first wahine his first woman was not very happy about that so <laughs> he cursed him and i will let you find out what that curse was okay <laughs> to be sure you weren't the model in that in that graphic were you that was not me that was a good <laughs> friend of mine umi jensen from Paola. <laughs> Okay, how about another one? What we got? Oh, this is one of my favorite pictures. This is fabulous, this picture. What is it? This is such a fun, uh, this was a, a fun, fun photo shoot about um, the legend of the floating island of Kahuku. So anciently, it was believed that the Ahupua'a of Kahuku was not connected to the rest of Oahu. It was actually separate from Oahu. And there were these menehune, or these little people, um, who lived on that island and and they would kind of paddle their little island it was so it's a floating island they'd paddle their little island to Oahu to get water and and so one day the famed demigod Maui was his name he used his magical fish hook to kind of catch that island and connect it to Oahu and the little men who were not very happy about it <laughs> And the fish hook was, uh, you know, a symbol for the super fairy. I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great stuff. What else? Let's see another picture. Oh, yeah. This is another one of my favorites. This is. And we have here in the center the um, the chief, Olopana. And he was from the Ko'olau Popo district. And what was happening in this story was that the demigod Kamapua'a, who was a, a pig god, kept stealing Olopana's chickens and eating them all. So he sent his warriors, you know, he and his warriors came and tracked him down in Ko'olaoloa where he was he was hiding out and living and, you know, they tried to capture him. So if you're familiar with the area Kaliuva'a or I think it's Sacred Falls, sure. um, which is now closed, but that, uh, that area, that valley and a lot of the geographic features of it were believed to be created by the pig god Kamapua'a at the time. And what I love about that picture is seeing these young men wearing malos. That's Let's see um, it again, yeah. one okay. of the best yeah. parts of doing the project is having these really squirmy teenage boys, young men, <laughs> older men, you know, saying, I have to wear what? <laughs> A malo? And, and, you know, not knowing how to put it on, not knowing, you know, it's basically a very long, skinny strip of material. <laughs> and, and they say, what do I do with this? Is this, is this for my head? <laughs> what is this for? And, and teaching them how to do that and then seeing them really embrace wearing the malo and holding the weapons and not wanting to take it off. And even after the photo shoot is done, they're wearing their malo to food land and to the beach and... And, you know, and, and sharing with me that it, it was one of the first times that they really felt like a Hawaiian, not just knowing that they're Hawaiian or, or that they have Hawaiian ancestry, but 
really feeling like they are Hawaiian and grateful to be a part of something that is perpetuating the culture. It's a beautiful photograph, it, it, as the other. Who You have a photographer who takes pictures like this. It's very good. So each legend has a different photographer. That ah. um, photo was taken by Corrine Tai Hook. Ah, okay. Okay, got any more graphics? Let's take a look at them. Okay, what's this? Is this something else you want to read to us? I can. I can definitely read it. This comes from uh, the legend of La'ie i Kabai. And so we have here Aiwohi Kupua, who is a chief from Kauai, and Poliahu, who is the snow goddess of Mauna Kea. So this excerpt reads, Aiwohi Kupua immediately sails back to Kohala, hoping to distract himself from his broken heart. While still holding on to the pride he acquired from his victory as the new boxing champion, he meets Poliahu, the goddess of the snow, along the slopes of her Mauna Kea home. They spend time together and Awohi Kupua exchanges his yellow O'o feather cloak for Poliahu's white snow mantle. Yet his mind wanders back to the mysterious woman in the O'o feather house, Laie Ikabai. And O'o is the name of a yellow bird, uh, a native Hawaiian bird that was used, you know, we would uh, catch the bird and, and pluck a couple of its feathers and, and over years and years and years, you know, build a feather cloak. So Aiwohi Kupua was trying to win the heart of this young woman and he brought this feather cloak to give to her, Laie Kavai, while she was on the island of Hawaii. But she rejected him and, and he felt rejected after he saw that she was living in a whole house covered in those yellow feathers. <laughs> so he felt like, oh, this, this gift isn't really enough for her. And then he went on and he met with Poliahu and, and he gave the cloak to her and he stayed there for a while with her. Great, great stories, great love stories. Great, yes. great sort of humorous and, and fun and uh, friendly. Um, but I thought an o, o was a tool. I thought an o, o was what you put in the ground to plant things. Mm -hmm. uh, now you say that it's a, it's a little bird too, a bird and a tool with the same word. Can you tell me yeah. the difference? Um, I need to look it up on the dictionary. <laughs> I know it has to do with, with the, you know, the grammatical markings. I think they might have the exact same grammatical markings, actually, but um, Maybe would you like me to look it up right now? <laughs> well, I want to know the future of the company. Uh, sure. And I, you guys, uh, you know, you have it's such, it's, it's profound, actually, and it's so fun and it's so heartwarming is what it is. And it reminds me of some of the Disney movies that have been made. So have, have they called you? Uh, maybe we should, you know, send him a note, ask him to call you, because some of this could be great movie stuff, cartoon or otherwise, you know. Is that sure. the future? Um, is that is that is that mm -hmm. what you're ultimately hoping for? I, I I have been thinking about it. Um, I think with the right partnership, it's definitely something we would consider. Um, currently, we have about five other districts that would like us to come into, okay. <laughs> into their district to, to do this project. We are also going to be putting these books online um, so that people can can download the iBook format. The our first our first series, which was the Legends of White and I, we have already translated into Japanese and Chinese for our foreign friends and we'll be putting those up. Um, but ultimately, our goal is to continue to get as many legends out, help as many districts who want to do this project. And like I said, if we find the right partners to to kind of take it even further, Disney or or any other company that you know would want to do that, um, we're definitely open and interested in that. I think a lot of people would be. Aloha, ko'o laoloa. That's your latest, yeah. but there'll be much more, won't there? Kailani, thank you so much for telling us about this and showing us about this. We wish you all the best. And I, I think this will be very popular, successful. And I can't wait to, to buy stuff online from you. I, I may buy both, you know, English and Hawaiian language copies. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you, Kanani. Thank you for having me. It was yeah. an honor, Jay. Yeah, great to talk to you. Aloha. strict.